locally, and what did that do to your college's or university's infrastructure? <laughs> it broke it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I like that. I mean, I know that's problematic, but our college's infrastructure was already broken. And I think that setting this up allowed people to get something they needed. If they didn't need it, they wouldn't come to it. And so what happened is it actually turned into a very good thing for everybody. Because we provided a service that IT didn't have to provide anymore. And then when it came to rethinking what their website was going to be, they said, you know, half of our university, if not more, is trained on how to use WordPress. And it can work for a campus-wide site. So what happened is they said, yeah. So ultimately, we've always had a good relationship with IT because we've helped them. We've helped them create department sites that they couldn't. They just weren't in the position to. And so I don't think it actually was something that they thought of, like we're breaking it. But for us, it was showing what's possible to people. And when you show them what's possible, they usually don't go back if it works. Does that make sense? So it wasn't really kind of a contentious battle. It's not like, oh, you mean instructional technologists taking over our space. I think it actually framed them what was possible. So what did you host it in? Uh, we hosted it externally uh, at okay. Cast Iron Coding, which is down in Portland. It's just a friend of mine from grad school. So, I mean, we really did. It became, it was a pilot for like four years until finally people are thinking it's, Enterprise, but we really did experiment with it for a long time. Yeah. So one of the things, a conversation we were having on the way here today, had to do with institutional control. Yes. And if you try to sell your institution, particularly if it's a part of a state system, why don't we host these things and be able to follow these people for the rest of their professional careers or just their personal life? somehow the perception is going to be that we can't control or be responsible for what they put on their site, but we are in some way uh, in complicit with whatever shows up. And then the taxpayers complain that you guys are supporting and da da da, and it's just this snowball effect. Yeah, and you know, look, we had those. We're a, we're a state college, right? We had those same questions. Here's how we did it, we were lucky. We said, and this is what our provost said, our provost said, look, someone's going to say, someone's going to drop the F-bomb sooner or later. Someone's going to do something or other that's going to, she said, but you know what? We're an institution of higher learning. We're secondary education. We need to be able to deal with that in some intellectual way. We need to be able to frame that. And so for that 1% potential of, you know, potentially like someone says something or someone does something that, that you know, gets you, how much, I mean, Depending on which, obviously, I'm not a lawyer. I don't pretend to be one. But then the other 99% of great stuff you get out there, it's lost. All because we're worried about that one word that someone might say. And we've been doing this now for over four years. And we still haven't heard that. And in four years, we've had, you know, 